Well, hello, everybody. My name's Tom Boone. I'm an associate director with the Outreach Foundation and delighted uh, to be in Pakistan, but even more delighted to introduce you to Mirab. Uh, we are here visiting uh, PAC Mission Society, which is based in Islamabad in the north of Pakistan, but they have projects really all throughout Pakistan. And so for the first time, the Outreach Foundation is visiting most of the provinces here. And it's just been a delightful day. It's Sunday today. And um, I want to introduce you to Mirab. And Mirab, thank you for agreeing to, to talk with me. You're welcome. Uh, we have a lot of donors and, and churches who are going to be listening to you, and I thought uh, we would want to just hear a little bit about your story. And so first of all, though, tell us what you do with the with Pak Mission Society. Okay, so uh, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Mirab Dean, and I was born in Sialkot, and currently I'm working as Women Engagement Officer in Pak Mission Society. Okay. So I am serving the Department of Church and Community Transformation mm -hmm. and what I do is like I go to the outskirts of Islamabad and Rawalpindi and there I engage with women through churches and then I get to develop small groups in the churches. We uh, form small groups in which we discuss their issues that the uh, women of that specific area are facing and then we prioritize those issues that what are the issues or major issues that we're going to focus um, at the present okay. time and then we kind of develop an action plan um, through strategic approaching and then we um, help the community through that. That sounds amazing so really you're you're getting to where the women are themselves you're hearing their voice yeah. and you're they are part of the uh, process then of deciding uh, or figuring out what you will do, what problems most need to be addressed. That's yeah. wonderful. Let's let's skip over that. We're going to come back to that piece. Um, I want us to hear about that. But tell us just a little bit. So you were about you and your family. You were born in Sialkot. Where yeah. is that? Um, Sialkot is in the northeastern um, area of Punjab, and my family basically we are converted. From Muslim really? Christianity. Really? Oh, praise God. Uh, my great grandfather, um, his name was Badr Deen. Hmm. It was Badr Deen, but when we converted to Christianity, we shifted it to Deen, D E A N. Okay. It was Deen before that. Hmm. So, um, since that, my family has been engaging with church very actively. They have been um, in the church management. My grandfather was um, the attorney in diocese. Um, he worked with missionaries, different missionaries, and my father was the elder of church for seven, uh, 10 years. So we have been involved with church, and that um, love for the God and for his people, that was inculcated in me since my birth. Wow. And then I went to convent school, and um, it was the time I didn't know the challenges the Christian people were facing because I was really young, and then I was living in the area where Christians lived um, uh, were uh, greater in population. So when I got education, I went to Islamabad, I shifted there for higher education. And what happened that in my university, there is um, a very diverse community. People for, come from different provinces, like KPK, Sin, uh, Punjab, Balochistan, Kashmir. So I got to know about the challenges females are facing. It was really, really hard for them to get education or to come out of their houses because oh. they couldn't get permission from their parents. Really? So their talent was wasted. And I was like, okay, I belong to minority, but still I am kind of privileged that my parents are allowing me to do that because that is my right, obviously. So I was like, I need to do something for females. I need to do something. Um, there was an ad in the magazine that um, somebody, uh, a competition in which uh, you had to write the educational reforms. So I participated in that. I got first prize in educational, innovative educational reform writing. Then I got various prizes, very publication in magazines. So I was like, okay, though I am from biological sciences, but I need to work in developmental sector. So that was my transformational journey. Um, at that time, I decided it was a critical moment in my life because I was at the verge of starting my professional career. So I was like, whether I want to work um, in labs according to my degree microbiology or whether I want to work for females mm -hmm. or women of my society. So it was a long thought process, um, very crit uh, critical time, but I applied for Teach for Pakistan, uh, oh, which okay. is um, a subunit of Teach for All um, and then I got selected. I got placed in outskirt of Islamabad, um, which is Golada. 
the place named Golara and I had to work with the girls over there, the female community and um, there I conducted a project of two years which mm -hmm. was on menstrual hygiene. Again, it's a taboo in Pakistan to talk about it. Really? So it was like really challenging. Um, first of all, I was placed in a school so I got to know that the girls when they were on their periods they weren't treated in the way they should have been. Um, teachers were not considerate towards them and they were scolded that um, why didn't you know that you're going to have periods or you should have stayed home. Really? So there's yeah. a lot of shame around that. Yeah. Really? We cannot talk about this to females. Really? And then, okay. What about males? Oh, and of course not. We can't. Sure. So it was like I decided I talked to my coach in the previous NGO, and I was like, no, I want to work on this thing. I want to educate females about this thing because there were um, a lot of issues related to health um, mm -hmm. surrounding this issue. So I decided I made a proposal. I gave it to my CEO. Um, she was like, okay, so are you going to do it? Is it possible? Because people are going to be really rebellious um, um, on this issue that we don't want to talk about it, etc., etc." So I contacted a psychiatrist, a, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, and a gynecologist. And I uh, had a meeting with them and I told them that I want to work on this thing. Mm -hmm. We had three seminars, um, sorry, six seminars, two for uh, mothers two for the students and two for the staff of the school. So it was kind of a really successful project because after that we visited various clinics in that area and there were severe reduction in the gynae issues and menstrual really? hygiene issues and it was it was a great achievement for me ah, because that's amazing. community when they were sitting there, the, even the mothers, they weren't opening up about the issues and there were like various um, taboos uh, revolving this fact like there were females like uh, oh we don't want to use the sanitary pads and because um, our flow fluctuates and etc so it was really really difficult to con um, kind of educate them but again I contacted psycho uh, psychiatrists and psychologists so it proved to be a really great uh, great event um, then I was like okay I have worked for the community um, the females okay. generally I want to work for female um, of Christians, like Christian females, okay. because uh, there is layer of, um, um, we can say, discrimination on females. And then Christian females are the more suppressed over here okay. in the community. So I got to know about Park Mission Society. Somebody told um, about Park Mission Society to my father. And he was like, okay, so you can apply over here. But then again, I couldn't find the course that I wanted to work on. So there was advertisement of women engagement officer and I was like, okay, so this is my chance. Yeah. I need to avail this opportunity. And before that, three days before um, hiring over here, I got hired in another NGO and I was so scared that I want to move, whether I have to move over there or if I get selected, I have to move over here, what I'm going to do. I called them, I said, okay, I know it's not the day to announce the results, but you got to announce the results because I need to move somewhere. So they said, okay, you were selected and huh. um, it was a great interview and you were our first priority. So we ensure that you will have the platform that you want to work on and you will have the opportunity to change the uh, lives of the Christian wow. community. So, yeah. yeah. So in on 11th December, I had my, um, I was joining this Park Mission Society on 11th December. So it was like a great opportunity for me. Yeah. I, well, you just... I mean, you exude confidence, yeah. and and you're very clear about what God has called you yeah. to do, your purpose um, at this stage in your life to glorify Him by coming alongside women. And yeah. and I and I'm fascinated that you've done this not just with Christian women, but really with the majority population as well. What what are some? Of, you've spoken about the challenges dealing with women's gynecological issues. What are some other challenges that women face that really are are burning in your heart? First of all, if I talk about uh, Christian females, I'm going to say most of them, about 70 to 80 percent of them are housemates. Mm. And this is because of the fact that they are not educated. Okay. And then when they are not educated, 
uh, above on that they don't have the skills to do anything for example maybe some know how to sew clothes uh, some have done um, course of beautician but still there is 70 to 80 percent of the population who have no skills and they are compelled to um, clean houses and they are treated so badly over there they don't know about their rights and then uh, they don't want to do that job, but they have no other option. So this is one of the major issues that I want to work on and I'm currently working on like uh, the education and vocational skills of um, Christian females. That's that's very important. Yeah. I, I, the more that I've been to Pakistan and heard from women, the more I hear that there's these deep-seated generational issues that just aren't going to go away yeah. just because you come and decide to fix it. It's It's going to take women and women like yourselves to really make a change and well who knows what god's going to do through you this this great opportunity that pak mission society has given to you yeah. uh, what do your parents think about all this that you're doing oh i'm going to be really honest on this they were okay. really scared in uh, the beginning because uh, when you're working or you're affiliated with an ngo you go to the outskirts or the unreached areas right. So unreached areas in Pakistan are somewhat, um, I'm not going, going to say all the time, but they're not very secure. Mm -hmm. So uh, before yeah. this job, I had an opportunity of working in Hunza and my parents were like, no, you don't need to go there. That is too far away and uh, there are going to be like security issues, etc., etc. So this time I had the chance, I told them my grandfather worked for um, this cause, you worked for this cause, and why are you stopping me? They were not stopping me, but they were concerned about my security. So it was like I was working, I got selected in Park Mission Society, so all of them are Christian. Actually, I had faced an issue of um, religious discrimination in my previous NGO, so they were really concerned that what will happen to her sure, if she sure. goes in some other um, organization and faces these issues. But Park Mission Society, they were like, okay, they are Christian, so he met um, Sir Maksud and he ah. knows them. So they assured her, uh, them that she'll be fine over here. Okay. So they were like, re they are confident and they are so proud of the cause I'm working for. Um, yet again, I'm going to say they are concerned. About of course. Well, issues. parents have that right to be concerned yeah, about our children. Yes. <laughs> so uh, can you tell me, um, how do you see God at work in Pakistan? I think so. There are, I think so. God's work is great, obviously. But in Pakistan especially, um, the pace uh, at which he is working is really, really great because 10 years back, if you move 10 years back, uh, we couldn't see um, that kind of spirituality in our people. But now the churches are strengthening. Mm. The pastors know about holistic development ah, uh, okay. and they know that, okay, our work is not only to preach gospel, but to tell them about other areas of life to skill uh, to make our people scared so that they develop the community develops so god is working in different uh, multiple ways that's actually. fantastic um so one last question and and you can just list a couple of ways how can we be praying for you you can pray for us um for especially for the females you can pray for the youth because youth, um, 60 to 70 percent population in Pakistan is youth. So our youth need to be trained about um, how to uh, do the holistic development or how to um, add into the economy of the country, etc. So you can pray for us, for the females, for the youth, for um, especially I want to request you to pray for our churches so that they can develop in a way that they can support the community. because. They are the center of our community, hmm. whether an educated person or an illiterate person or um, a person, a young kid or an old age person, everybody is affiliated with church in our community. So um, you can pray for churches, pastors, pastorate committees, dioceses, that no political issues can um, kind of harm these um, groups created by God and they can help us in the better way. Wonderful. And your name is again? Mirab. Mirab. Outreach Foundation, uh, thank you very much for listening to this wonderful conversation with Mirab. Uh, Mirab, again, just thank God for what you are doing. 
and proclaiming the name of the Lord in this work that you um, are doing, the way you are committed to Pakistan, the women of Pakistan, is a real blessing. Thank you all for listening. And again, um, this is Tom Boone with the Outreach Foundation, Associate Director for Mission. And thanks to Barry Long, who is behind this camera uh, and has recorded this all the way. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.